Hello again. In this video, we will be discussing methods of creating user sessions for a multi-user project. The CMT series is designed to be compatible with any smart device or PC. Using the CMT Viewer app, you can take your HMI anywhere on the factory floor. You can also have multiple users on the system working independently at the same time. These are amazing features but can create some concern regarding safety as well as user command conflicts. You may also have user conflicts when executing macros. There may also be reasons you only want to have local access to some controls. And you also may have a need to make simpler or large object versions of your project windows for your handheld devices. So let's get started. The idea behind the concept of remote user sessions is take for example a remote user logs on and they are assigned a session. And you can see here the user can access session one's macros, controls, and registers that are allocated for session one. And at the same time, you can see it's closed off so another user can't get into any of that data, those controls. They can't write anything to those registers. They can't execute those macros. So they would be assigned session two. And of course, they have access to all of the session two related data and objects. And nobody else can get in while they're in session two and access any of that. At the same time, the user is bound to only access the data that they can get to from their session launch point. And what I mean by that is, if we look at the project that I created, uh, we've got a series of function keys for navigation. So when you log in and select session one, you navigate to the session one window and only the controls and registers and indirect windows and macros and things like that can be accessed from this window alone. Same thing with session window two, three, four, and so on. Now the question is, how do we make sure that nobody else other than the original user can navigate to that window. Well, it's very simple. We use the security settings that are provided within the function key. So from the security tab, you can see that this function key is only enabled if RWBit 100.0 is off. So back over on the general key, uh, we add a notification bit, which is the same bit, 100.0, and we set it on. So as soon as we hit the navigation key, we disable it. And under the security settings, we've got it set to hide when disabled. So um, we're doing that on on each one of these buttons and of course I've got them layered so that they're used in order but they don't have to be um, only if you've got a message under the last one uh, that needs you need to be sure that would be on the bottom layer so uh, over here on our ses session one window I've added a bit set object to set the same security bit off when the window closes. And uh, that would be all you would need to do in a perfect world. However, the world isn't perfect and there's always a chance that somebody has a session through CMT Viewer. And in the event they just uh, X'd out of the application we would never get this set bit command to turn that bit back off and enable it. 
So what I've done is I've created some macros and um, when this uh, session window cycles, uh, macro 10 is active, is cycling. And uh, all it is doing, it's, it's turning on a bit that we're going to use in another macro, LB100. This is kind of the heartbeat bit for the session. As long as this bit is active, our other macro will know that, that this window is open. So yeah, every scan of the, of the processor, when this window is open, it's going to write a value of one to each one of these re registers. Now, on a periodic cycle, this check macro is running. And uh, what it's going to do is going to get the value of that heartbeat bit I was telling you about. And this one is specific to session one. And, um, and it's going to get the count value that we have buffered in this register. And if the uh, value of this active bit, of our heartbeat bit, is 1, then we're going to go ahead and, and um, turn that bit off. We're going to write a 0 into that same register. Uh, we're going to set a delay here. And then we're going to get that value again and see if it has been written back to 1 by the active macro. If it has not, if it's still at 0, then we're going to add 1 to our count object and buffer that data back in the buffer register. If it is 1, if it, you know, turn back to 1 again, that means that we're active, so we're going to write a value of 0 to our count and send that to the buffer. Now, if, um, if it comes back twice that the uh, value is 0, we're going to assume that the session is over and uh, and we will our count value will go up above two and we will go ahead and end the session we'll set our security bit off and uh, we will set our count value to zero and write that to the buffer so there it's sitting and waiting and that's basically all there is to it now I will um, uh, you can always pause and look at this code and copy it, but I will go ahead and include a copy or the text from both of these macros in the box below. And just for um, cleanup purposes, uh, I add I added a a macro to run on the first scan and it's gonna write a value of zero I might ought to go ahead and put this here equals zero I want to write a value of zero to RW100 and remember the um, first four bits of of that register of RW100 are our four security bits that we use here in our function keys. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, download this to our HMI and uh, go ahead and test it out. And there we are, all finished now. Now here you can see uh, these numeric objects here on our start window. These are 
These are our buffer registers for the count and our check macro. So you can see they're, uh, they're all cycling through because none of the sessions are used. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and launch uh, CMT Viewer. And I'm going to go ahead and use a remote session. So uh, I log on. I'm going to select session one. And uh, now you can see that our uh, buffer register here is staying at zero. That's because uh, the session is used. And here I can execute my session one controls. I've got a, uh, a specific session one macro here to fill this here. Uh, so yeah, uh, so I can go ahead and go back to home and you can see automatically on the local screen that's displaying our start window, you can automatically see that it, uh, that session one came back available. So uh, we'll go ahead and watch on uh, CMT viewer here while on the local screen, I go ahead and select a session. And here you can see that that is no longer available. Um, if I move into a session and, uh, and didn't navigate off of this page and just close out the CMT viewer, you'll see our account will start to come up now and it re-enables our session back for use. Now there is one more scenario I want to bring up. Um, I would imagine that in this uh, scenario you would not want to use one of these sessions for the local user. So what I would do is create another button and use the control token so that only the local user can navigate. Now uh, the function key does not have a control token option available, but we can always use one of our trusty combo buttons. So from the security tab we're going to select the local only control token and we want to add a, an action group, and since it's a window change, we'll do the up action. And it's as simple as that. Uh, and I'm going to layer this button over top of all the rest of them. And I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and align everything over top of each other. And we'll go ahead and do a download. Now that's all finished. Uh, we'll go. We can see over here on our local screen. Uh, we can see our local only button. It's on top. And from CMT Viewer, we can see that uh, that we can't even get into that one. So here we would get into session one. 
and here we will get into our local local page and it's as simple as that thanks for watching and be sure to come back and see more of our instructional videos